Welcome to another episode of Angels, Positivity and Love. We are smoking out here in Minnesota with Echo Bodine. She's incredible. Oh my God, what a history with her. And she has done it all, but she's stayed on her path and she's dedicated herself to helping others. And I have to emphasize that to the 20th degree. She's got workshops these days. She's got a new TV show launching. Check out boldbravetv.com. That starts next week. She's got at least 15 books. She's working on two more. I'm going to name a few before we get to her and do the intros. Um, the, one of the biggest books, the one that I'm the most familiar with, our household is a huge fan of hers. This has been sitting on my shelf for at least 10 or 12 years. I got to page 111 uh, in reading it. I was loving it. So Good. 2001, A Still Small Voice. She's got 1993, Passion to Heal. Echoes of the Soul in 1999, The Gift, I'm skipping the second half of the titles, 2003, My Big Book of Healing, 2008, Hands That Heal, 2004, What Happens When We Die, 2013, How to Live Happily Ever Afterlife, Genius yeah. Title, 2022, The Secret Psychic, 2022, The Little Book of True Ghost Stories, 2011, She Ghosts Bus, and there's a bunch of others. I'll have this in the footnotes of the video. But I've got to mention, at age 17, uh, she was psychic or figuring it out, asking for assistance, getting assistance, asking for instruction, taking lessons. But by 1979, 44 years ago, she had hung out the shingle and gone full on the path. And she's done a lot of um, shows, the Today Show, uh, been interviewed pretty much everywhere, tons of magazines, tons of newspaper articles. Um, the real deal, and what I have to again say is genuine or authentic, super kind, super big heart. You're going to find, I think this resonates the most, just gentle and a big giver. So I want to welcome Echo Bodine to Angels, Positivity, and Love. We are so psyched to have you on. Thank you, Echo. Michael, holy smokes. What a wonderful introduction that was. Thank you. Wow. Well just makes me proud. Thanks, yes. honey. Thank you. Well, we love the colors you're wearing. And uh, we got to play a little bit before the show. You're up in Minnesota. I'm in San Antonio, Texas right now. It's almost rivaling our 2011, 100 degrees, 100 days almost. Uh, it's been brutally hot, but it's changing in about five days. We might get rain. Oh, Holy good. Cow. Oh, good, uh, honey. How has life been these days? I'm hearing you're super busy. RPMs are to the max. You know, it's been... So interesting lately. I mean, okay, so in what, two weeks, I turned 75, which blows my mind. And I think back to, oh my gosh, just so many things, like cool things that I've learned about. And, you know, honey, really, I, <laughs> I'm just in awe of what's going on right now really. And um, yes, workshops. I teach three classes a week right now on Zoom, which is really nice because, oh my God, I can reach out to everybody on the whole planet. I just had a lady two days ago from Malaysia sign up for my psychic development class that I'm going to start next week. It's like, holy smokes. I mean, I, I just get excited when I see, thank God for Zoom. Hasn't Zoom just changed our lives? The pandemic made it totally acceptable to use Zoom. And so we do have something to be very thankful for there. Honey, you know, I think there was a lot of good that came out of the pandemic. I really do. Families got closer. Lots of people got pets. Um, I mean, people were forced to get to know their families. And even that is just I don't know. I, I look back at it really not as, and I did have COVID. I was sicker than I have ever been. I thought for sure I was dying. And, um, and yet setting that aside, when I think about the pandemic, I think it was good. It was good for a lot of people. A lot of people who didn't know how to slow down were forced to slow down. Um, and again, the thought comes to me, so many people, they were so busy that they they weren't even really hanging out with their kids anymore. It was just, okay, homework, okay, eat dinner, okay, go to bed. Um, and everybody was forced to just hang with the people that they love. There's a lot of this, but even this can be your Zen master. 
I know, honey. I agree. Oh my God, these things have taken over the world. Yes, yeah. but now they can reach you because you've treated it like a business and seriously so. There was a time you were headed out to Malibu to certain, you know, every other month, every month or even more. Uh, and you were having celebrity clients, other clients. It was a big bit of business, but you've always been really strong, uh, at least in your books and the way you've told the story with listening to your intuition and letting the business grow organically, letting everything unfold. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started um, and Malibu in particular, uh, or just starting again, you, you actually did the center for intuitive living and that's been going on for about 20 years. So think where you go in house to do learning intuitive yeah. learning. Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Malibu, uh, was just the coolest thing because I went out there to see my best friend and, um, and we had, it was a Saturday morning. We had breakfast with her trainer, her physical, you know, trainer. And he said something about his marriage. And Michael, all of a sudden, I just opened up like a fortune telling machine and just started giving him all of this information. And then, and I don't look at people when I give them a reading because, you know, if they react, uh, it kind of, pulls me back to my human side and so I just I always look at something else when I'm giving it and when I came back and looked at him he was just stunned well I didn't know at the time that he worked at the Malibu Health Club so okay we go home after after breakfast and he calls me like two hours later and said could you go to the the Malibu Health Club and do a reading for the owner and I'm like sure it, it just came out of left field and I went and I honey really I just I could feel that she needed healing and it felt like the area uh in her um female parts I'll say and so I said to her would you mind if I gave you a healing and blah 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 and and then afterwards everything that I said she confirmed and then Michael, she just said, would you like to work here? And I said, <laughs> That's awesome. Work here? I, I, I live in Minnesota. And she said, well, you could just fly out every month, every other month. It was that easy. I mean, I, I, I didn't even intend to go out there to get a job. I went out there to see my friend and um, it all worked out really well. And you know what, honey? Really, like you just said, I, I run my life, everything, business, personal, everything is by my intuition. And so I would ask my intuition, okay, what dates should I go out next month? And they would always pick the dates. And oh God, uh, I would ask, okay, should I go to Malibu next month? No. Okay. And then the next month, should I go to Malibu this month? Yes. Okay. When should I go? Do, do, do. And Honey, every time that I went out there, something really significant would happen during that week. And then I'd fly home. And, you know, it was so interesting because the last time I was there, I met someone that I had really, one of a movie star that, oh my God. 1995, I've been dying to ask this question. Can we <laughs> at least hear, you got to tell this story and I don't want to interrupt any more than this, but- can you at least tell us a movie that they would have been one of the major stars in? Because 1995 now is, I mean, you might be able to, you didn't share it in the book. You couldn't share it in the book. That was an older book, but you might be able to at least say a movie that the person is in that thrilled you because that was a really cool experience, a very validating moment in your career. Well, first I have to say I was at one of his movies with my mom, um, two weeks before my guidance said, go back out to Malibu. And I, when we were walking out of the theater, I said, mom, I would give anything if I could meet him. He is, he's, I just love him. I've seen all of his movies 10 times. And she said, oh, honey, you know, it'll happen if it's supposed to, like my mom would always say. And um, Michael, I can't even tell you. Okay, so my intuition, was very interesting it was very specific 
um, when I said, when should I go to Malibu? Uh, picked out the date. Okay. And then it even showed me four o'clock on Friday. And then I saw a picture of a man, but I only saw brown eyes. Okay. And it, it said important. And it said, after that, you can go home. Okay. So I flew out to Malibu on Tuesday and I kept asking my boss, is there anybody booked Friday at four o'clock? No. Mm -mm. Oh God. Did I misread this? Oh man. And so she called me Thursday night at the place I was staying. She said, Echo, you've got an appointment tomorrow at four o'clock. They just booked it. And I said, does the person have dark brown eyes? Yep. And I said, okay, all right. <clears throat> and Michael, I did not think that it was this movie star. I did not. It wasn't even in my mind. And <clears throat> she said, yeah, it's so-and-so. She said the name. I screamed on the phone. <laughs> I, I said, I can't, I, I can't, I can't give him a reading. I, I, I can't, no, I can't. And she, she says to me, Echo, be a professional. And I said, I, I don't think I can, but I'll try. Oh my God, Michael, I tried on five different outfits that morning. I was just a wreck. And <laughs> so he gets there and I said, um, hello, Mr. So-and-so, uh, follow me. And I was just, I was so nervous. I couldn't even look at him. And so, so I'm like 20 feet ahead of the guy and I go into the office, he comes in. And when I do a healing on someone, I always put a hanky where my hands are. So I took the hanky and put it on his face. And then I said to myself, okay, now just pretend that this is Fred Smith. Yep. And, uh, and then at one point, oh my God. So I'm channeling a healing to him and I'm seeing all this white stuff in his body and me, sugar addict, I'm thinking, oh God, he eats a lot of sugar. And uh, and his body is saying, this isn't good for me. You have to tell him to stop. And I thought, okay. Um, so I said, you know, there's a lot of this white stuff going through your body, your veins, and it's not good for you. And he lifts up the hanky and he says, cocaine, darling. And I- Oh it, yeah, so we don't need his name now, but- <laughs> <laughs> and and then he put the hanky back down and I, I god I was just I, I said yes and then I gave him a reading okay and then afterwards I said to him Mr. so and so did I handle myself in a professional manner and he said well at first you were a bitch he said I almost didn't even come in here you didn't even you didn't even look at me. You wouldn't even talk to me. And I said, that's because I'm your biggest fan. And I just freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and then he kissed me on the cheek and uh, he said, oh my God. Okay. I get it. And then, um, and then uh, the next, he came back the next day and brought his sister and brought his wife and gave me a card with his phone number on it, bought all my books. I mean, it was, yeah, it was really, and then after that, Michael, my intuition, when I got back to the place I was staying, it said, you can go home tomorrow and you don't have to come back. And that was it, honey. Mm. I never went back to mm. Malibu, never. And I felt it so strong that I was needed here. I, I was meant to get work done and here in Minnesota. Plus, you know, I really missed I mean, Minnesota is a very grounding place. You know, every five feet, there's another tree. And I mean, we just, it's really grounding up here. And the lake. And the lake, Sonny, they're everywhere. <laughs> so yes, you probably surmised who this gentleman is. It's nope. not Burt Reynolds. It's not Robert Redford. No. no. Okay. Is there an is there a genre without getting into the name? Is there a genre? One little reveal that's only a one percent of a one percent reveal is was he known as an action, more drama, more? Okay, I'll give one movie. Yes. Oh, that's the best. Thank you. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. 
We'll leave it at that. Okay. All oh, right. Very <laughs> love this. Okay, cool. Um, so look, you have also advised or at least interacted with, I forget if it was Paramount, but for the movie Ghost, yeah. um, you've had a lot of people come to you of all different ilk. And, uh, you know, people get flabbergasted because they're like, how could you possibly know this or flummoxed? Let's use a lot of big yeah. words. Yeah. Uh, and you're used to this. And I love that you said that you don't make eye contact uh, when you're doing your thing. Yeah, honey, because really, as soon as if they start to cry, really, I'm in a zone when I'm doing a reading and I'm trying to stay away from my ego that's questioning everything that I'm saying. And so I'm just in this flow. And then even if I hear them crying, it's like, stay with it, echo. stay with it, stay with it, and just keep talking instead. Because when I was younger, I didn't know to do that. And every time somebody would start to cry or <gasps> make an expression, it would completely bring me back to my mental mind, and I, I would get blocked. And so then, I don't know, honey, I don't even know how I figured it out to just don't look at them. But I did, and it's so much easier. Now, if I do a reading, which is hardly ever, I do them for my students, mm -hmm. um, but the general population, I don't I don't really do readings anymore. And now, if I am going to do a reading for someone, it's online. I have them email me their questions. And so then that's really a good way for me because I'm not getting any reactions. I'm just going with the flow, saying everything that's coming to me, and then I shoot it off to them and you yeah. could do your twice a year charity online where you get bids from the actors again to go to your favorite charity and you have them select so that you know they don't mind dropping twenty thousand for a reading they know it's going to the the ymca kids thing or whatever it's going to but you could always do that that would fundraise get you back in with some celebrities even if it's by zoom and uh i'm interrupting the flow here but i got to get back to one thing that's uh probably going to apply to every audience member where they're whether they're a veteran healer they've never heard of intuition but they know they've got it or could um what's what do you do to set your boundaries how has it evolved from the beginning to oh, keep your God. energy intact and not take on other people's samsonite luggage oh honey that has been quite a journey to figure this, <laughs> to figure it all out yeah you know, um because honey really when i was younger and i was quietly telling people I had psychic abilities um oh my god it became awful wherever I went people would come up to me and can I just ask you one question and I you know god what can, that can't hurt and and after a while I stopped doing anything social I stopped telling people that I had these abilities because I could I couldn't I couldn't go anywhere when somebody didn't come up and say, oh, could I just ask you one question? And my therapist actually was the one, because I was getting fried and I was talking to her about this. And she said, Echo, get a bunch of business cards made, which I hadn't at that point. And she said, and when you go to a social function, if someone comes up to you and says, can I ask you one question? She says, give them a business card and say, call me on Monday and set up an appointment. And honey, I was like, duh, why didn't I think of that? But it had never occurred to me. And I started doing that and people stopped coming up and asking me if they could just ask me one question. So, and you know what else? Okay, um, I went to Al-Anon and Al-Anon taught me how to say no because I didn't know how to say no to people. I wanted everybody to like me. And so of course I'm gonna try to give a reading to anybody on the planet. And after a while, I was so fried and it's like, whoa, I got to learn boundaries. Honey, I didn't even know what a boundary was back then. Okay. It was just, if somebody asks you to do something, you say, yes, that's how life is. And so I learned through my therapist and through going to Al-Anon meetings to detach emotionally from people, um, to say, no, this is not a good time for me call me at the office. Um, I'm just trying to think nowadays, pe people just don't do that to me anymore. Pe people are, except, you know, honey, every once in a while, I'll get an email. Hi, Echo. Um, my name is uh, Debbie. And uh, yeah, I want to know how my dad's doing in heaven. 
Debbie, dad in heaven, really? That, you know, I'm not James Van Prague for God's sakes. I can't yes. just pull stuff out of the air. And so people- And you're a huge fan of James Van Prague. Just to, uh, I just to plug James Van Prague, I've had a chance to Zoom with his agent, longtime agent, and I'm a fan of hers. Uh, but I needed to mention, uh, is there a line- that you still use today. You got to walk into a room before you go teach the workshop because you've been big over all these years into, hey, you don't have to rely on me. Let me instead show you how to rely on you. You've already got the skills within. And so you're the whole teaching fishing rather than handing out fish. What is your line that you fall back to when you're feeling a little busy or you want to make sure you're separating you know, your energy, their energy, only, only the highest good uh, that's going on. What is there one that you love to fall back on? You know, you know me so well, you probably know that line better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Um, God, honey, what line? You know, it's always intuition. I'm always pushing people back to their intuition. And that's why now I teach how to live intuitively because a lot of people are confused about what is intuition and is it psychic abilities? Is it intuition? And so uh, now what I finally, after years, um, now I teach an eight week, how to live intuitively followed by a 10 week psychic development class because God, you know, somebody just sent me some questions yesterday and all of them could have been answered by his own intuition. Mm -hmm. And my intuition, when I saw his questions, my intuition said, no, 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 you are not going to enable people anymore. That's how it said it. But, um, you're you're going to direct people to their own intuition. And so that's what I do pretty much now, honey. And that's I love this. Uh, I refuse to tell anybody anything. They got to do their own listening. But you made the biggest point. You were talking about up here and up here, and there's a million ways to describe thinking, resistance, judging, ego, psyche, unlove. Uh, not that some of your thinking isn't, not all of it's a waste of energy, and we're going to do plenty of wasting of energy, but then your heart. Love is love, unconditional love, no limits, You, you awareness. Well, how do you describe this and this, and what's okay. one of your favorite techniques to help a, a student go, aha, I finally okay. am getting what's always been with me? Good. Okay, honey. Yes. Oh, I love, it. you know, honey, I could talk about intuition for weeks. Okay. So up here is our psychic abilities. And for those people who don't know where my hands are right now, they're up here by my head. Okay. So we've got our third eye, which is what we get visions with. So, you know, it's like, I tell my students, okay, close your eyes, visualize your kitchen, and, and then, okay, good, there, now you can open your eyes. So that spot where they just saw their kitchen, that's where the visions come, and it comes from our third eye. So that's clairvoyance, the gift of seeing. Clear audience is the gift of hearing. Now, the thing about that is that when our guides are communicating to us, they don't have a voice box, so they... Uh, they think to us, they send us thoughts. So their thoughts come in and it comes in here. The challenge for people with clear audience is that um, they sound just like our thoughts. So you have to learn to discern the difference between our own thoughts and the thoughts coming in. Okay. So there's clairvoyance, there's clear audience, the gift of hearing, there's clear gustance, which is a strange one. It's a psychic nose, and I can't teach somebody how to have a psychic nose. You either have one or you don't, and it, it actually can come in pretty handy because when our deceased loved ones come to visit us, they will usually project a smell to us so that we know it's them, and so if you have a psychic nose, you can get that smell, and you know, usually like with my students, they'll get a smell of something that reminds them let's say of their dad or their grandma or something and they'll turn to somebody else in the room and say oh my god can you smell that cherry tobacco and the other people are like no okay so they've got a psychic nose 
The last one is called clairsentience, which is we sense things with our body. Okay. Our body, you know, Michael, I think ever since we were little, we've relied on our clairsentience as human beings, because especially if we grew up in a dysfunctional family, because, you know, we've got these adults coming at us, they're smiling at us, uh, and, uh, but they're abusive. Okay. And we learn to put out our little sensors. Okay, is this person, yeah, I know this person smiling at me, but are they going to hurt me? Is this a bad situation? I think we've been relying on that little system ever since we were born. Okay, so that's clear sentience where we sense things about people and situations. Okay, so what I say to my students is notice it's all up here in your head. This is where your psychic abilities are. Now, down in here, the area between your heart and your belly button, deep inside your soul, is this amazing light. And it is the divine part of yourself. I have come to believe that it is the voice of God within us, the voice of our own divinity. And that is down in here in our gut. And the thing that's really cool, yes, sir, a still small voice <laughs> is uh, the, the coolest thing about that. And that's why I want the people that I train to be psychic. I want them to know about their intuition because, you know, for psychics, we get visions of things. Okay. And well, how do I interpret that? And so we can go to our intuition and say, Okay, well, I just got a picture of Darth Vader, and I don't know what this means. Um, and so then we can talk to our intuition and say, well, it, it does it mean powerful? Well, okay. Uh, does it mean, uh, I don't know. And we can ask questions. Now, that day, okay, this man had asked me in a reading, he said his, he had a low sperm count and he wanted to know if he was going to be able to get his wife pregnant. And so when I asked the question, Darth Vader came up on my screen and I could not. I kept asking my intuition different things. Well, does it mean this now? Does it mean this now? Does it mean this now? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to interpret this. And it said, call Bob. Okay. So I called my friend Bob, who is a psychic. And I said, okay, this just happened. And I've got Darth Vader on my screen. How would you interpret this? And he said, Echo, it's a no brainer. And then he did this, Luke, you are my son. And I said, oh my God, <laughs> really? And my intuition said, yes. So I said to my guides, I said, you know, you could have just said yes. When I said, is he going to get his wife pregnant? You could have just said yes. <laughs> You had to do the Darth Vader thing, didn't you? And they get such a kick out of it when I don't know what they're talking about. Really, they all laugh. They think it's really funny. And then they tell me, well, that's a teaching moment. So you can use that as an example when you're trying to describe how helpful it is to have your intuition work with your abilities. So that's what it is, honey. And honestly, every day I wake up in the morning, I sit on the side of my bed with my cat, and I talk to my intuition and I just say, you know, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to focus on today? Uh, is there anything I need to know? And honey, really, I just, I just wait. And then I ask specific questions. Should I do this? Um, should I try that? And I get answers all the time. And I've run my business like this for forever, just forever. And people think I'm crazy. People think, how can you run a business by your intuition? And people will say things like, well, don't you think that's a little irresponsible? I'm like, are you kidding? If anything, it's more responsible because intuition knows everything, which always just boggles my mind, but it does. And so it all works pretty good for me. But that's that's the difference, honey, is... Um, a lot of people think like when you say psychic stuff, they think that you 
talking about intuition. Uh, Edgar Casey said that intuition is the highest form of psychic abilities. So, but for my sake, I don't know if it's because I'm a Virgo. I just need things in order to understand them. And so I say intuition's here, psychic abilities are here. So. And there are so many professions that that intuition is just a given. Business people who are successful, Lee Iacocca, somebody, they follow their intuition and it's one good deal after another or whatever they do for a living. Same thing with athletes. There's a lot of athletes who they're in the zone, but they, there's more to it than that. They just know. And they take that chance, whether it's on the field, off the field. And so, and keep going, artists, musicians. I mean, the flow, whatever you want to call it, the universe connecting to the universe, the force from Star Wars, let's do Darth Vader. Um, there's something to it all. It's why I love business people. In a way, I always argue the business crowd is ready to go for listening. They're more disciplined spiritually. They're ready to go. Just boop, pull the cord in the back and they're <laughs> off listening. Um, so tell us a little bit more. How has it been going, you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s? What are you noticing each generation? Um, and, and I know it's hard to generalize, but are you finding people are even more open whether they knew it or not? Oh, now? yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, honey, I remember back in 1965 when we had this scary situation happen in my family and <clears throat> which led my mom to call a psychic. Well, back then, you had to know somebody that went to a psychic to find a psychic. It was a lot more underground than then uh, I, I can't even compare it to anything. Um, and so a lady in my mom's prayer group had mentioned to her that she had been to a psychic and, oh, okay. So she called her, could you give me the name of that psychic? And that's really how people got business back then, just word of mouth. And um, <clears throat> tell you, it was uh, almost like this, little secret society that was going on behind the curtain. And nowadays, holy smokes, they're everywhere. I mean, the place, there's psychics and healers everywhere, which is really cool. Although I do have to say, religion is still um, in the dark when it comes to these abilities. And that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about this TV show, because I'm going to talk about psychic abilities and what they are. I'm so tired of listening to people put psychics down, put put the gift of prophecy down, put the gift of healing down, call us weirdos or Satanists. I mean, oh, God, there's still a lot of the negativity associated with the, quote, new age, unquote, Um <laughs> like John Kelly, uh, the man who owns Bold Brave TV, he said to me, I go, this is not new age. This is this stuff's been around forever. And I said, I know, but they've put a label of new age on it. And um, and a lot of people are still afraid. It's really sad what religion has done. And sure. I get, you know, Michael, I get so many people that come to me and say, you know, I think I have these gifts because I get these visions and then they come true. Uh, but my pastor told me I have to stay away from you. And, you know, that just, it just finally pushed me over the edge. And it's like, all right, enough is enough. And so <clears throat> um, that's what my TV show is going to be about, is bringing all of this to people in a positive way and also I think part of it is because people don't know what it is. What are psychic abilities? Um, I think once they have an understanding of all of this stuff that you and I do, then they can calm down and they can ask themselves, oh, do I want to do this? They don't have to go to their pastor to get permission to develop a gift that God has given them. It's like, see, that just, even when I say that, I just want to, take out my squirt gun and squirt somebody right in the face. <laughs> it's a lot well, of good consciousness. If you 
you know, hear it from the Buddhist crowd or folks from India, certain segments of the population. Consciousness is everything. Consciousness is like the force. We'll stick to that theme in and around you. And even Joseph Campbell talked about it with Bill Moyers in Power of Myth. He said, I think consciousness is energy. And um, people see auras. They they feel they can feel the flow of the concert. It's why music's so popular. There's just something bigger than what our thinking is about or structure or human organizations. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit more about, I'll call it love with a capital L or awareness, consciousness, universal love, whatever it is, big, fluffy, light. Uh, what what do you call it? And what uh, how do you take a break out of all the activities going on to make sure you ground again and uh, get your battery recharged? Yeah, grounding. Oh, man, that's so huge. And, you know, a lot of times people don't even know what you mean when you say grounding. And I say just anything you have to do to connect to the ground, really. We just um, sometimes, you know, honey, after a reading, I'll be so spacey. I, uh, yay, it's hard to pull myself back into this reality. And so I'll, I'll go to the hardware store and I'll, I'll just walk around the hardware store and look at things. And they, <laughs> it actually pulls me back in. Like I'll look at something and think, now what would you do with that? Oh, and it, Honey, it brings me back to the reality, at least that we live in. And um, and then I leave and I'm back in my body, nice and grounded, clear headed. It's what I have to do sometimes. Um, you know, one thing before I forget, going back to psychic and uh, intuition, people always ask me, well, Echo, how do I know if it's my mind making things up or if it's my intuition? And I tell people, listen to the way you talk. Did you, like, if you say, well, I think we should go today. Okay. Or I just know we should go today. Knowing is intuition. Okay. When you say, I think you're coming from your mind, your brain. Okay. I think we should do this. All right. I know this is what we should do. Knowing is what you want. That's that's the statement you want to hear yourself saying is, I know. And that is coming from the divine part of yourself. Okay. Beautiful. Do you know or do you think that we should blow a little sage your way from Texas to Minnesota? If I light some. <laughs> we did this before the show, and this is the one hallmark or staple of the show. Guests all over the world have done this. If you've watched the show before. New Zealand, Australia, but it doesn't matter where you are and it doesn't matter if it's five years from now, just to let a little bit of sage come your way. And here's the deal. We're all linear. So we actually are just focused on the sage smoke. Why not get a little more? Why not yes. ask for healing out of the sage smoke or two weeks of spontaneous joy for no reason whatsoever? Good luck with that one. Uh, <laughs> my microphone is where my head is going right here. So I'm going to look to my right. But if you don't ask, you don't get. Echo is going to tell you that in a heartbeat. And she's there to remind you, you've got amazing skills. Yep. yep. This is just good old regular sage, a red-tailed hawk feather. And uh, I'm blowing it to Echo Bodine in Minnesota right now. She's got um, physically the Center for Intuitive Living that she started 20 years ago. Lots of workshops, even more workshops today. Online, um, catch her on Zoom. But she's also got BoldBraveTV.com starting next week, a new show that's going to be super exciting. Okay. Echo, what are you getting for all of us? And you can ask for flowers, people out there. Ask for flowers. Let angels bring them to you. Oh, what am I getting, honey? What? Are yeah, you are you smelling sage? Or are you catching? Yeah, I can. I'm definitely feeling the energy of the sage. I'm not smelling it right now, but I did earlier. But okay. I'm getting the energy of it, honey. Literally, it's coming to me from the screen. It's really cool. Good. Whoop. And I almost dumped it uh, and I'll snub out what little is left of the smoke. <laughs> Glad I didn't do that on live uh, <laughs> TV. All right. And then I'll do some too. Oh, yay. And do you have sweet grass is what you said? I do, sweetie. I have, Um, let's see. Uh, you know what I have is I've got this thing. Look at, it's full of Palo Santo. Can Ooh. you see those sticks, honey? Yes. Isn't that cool? I found this at a spa. And That's it was beautiful. like, oh, how fun that, yeah. The, the whole thing was full. So I be, that was, uh, what did I just say? Pa uh, Palo Santo? Palo Santo, yeah. 
One of the areas you've helped folks in the past with has to do with ghosts and clearing spaces or teaching others to own that. Um, can you talk to us? Do you still do that or is that a little much for your energy? Oh boy. I am so fried on ghosts. You don't know, now. I just want to say, just go to the other side. And, uh, but, but the good news is honey, my brother, Michael, uh, he still does it. I can't believe he still does it, but he feels so bad for people when they call him and he's got a, they've got a haunted house. So he still goes out and does it. It's something we used to do together. And uh, it was really nice to have a team, you know, go together because ghosts are so light. You know, you, you, you walk into a room and you think, I think that's a lady over there in the corner in a red dress. And then I can look at my brother and say, do you see anything in here? And he'll say, yeah, there's a lady over in the corner in a red dress. That was really helpful for both of us. And because um, some ghosts, I mean, you walk in a room and man, you can see them right there. And then others, their energy is so faint. And um, I, you know, honey, I don't, I don't, uh, really it's more like ghost counseling than ghost busting really how do you bust what do you oh michael you gotta hear this there was this show on tv okay <laughs> that these guys they were from i think tennessee and i think they were either cousins or brothers maybe cousins okay so they had a show on ghost busting and so this one version or one episode, they claimed that they caught a ghost and stuck it in this box and took the box out to the forest and then dynamited it. And I... <laughs> That's a I, poor little box that went goodbye. Oh my God. I, I tell you, I mean, people... People Nick, will do anything to be on TV. I'll tell you that. Is and, Nikki Nikki Bodine is your sister, and she's a well-known psychic as well, uh, and more. Um, yes. Do you do you still interact with her professionally uh, once a week, once a month, or is it? Oh, honey. Well, first of all, we talk every day, probably yeah. two or three times a day. Okay. Um, and if somebody calls me and they want a reading on a deceased. Uh, that's her specialty is communicating with the deceased. So um, um, I, I refer people to her and uh, she, our mom was also a well-known psychic and she uh, always read tarot cards. She had psychic abilities, but she thought it was easier to, to uh, see, how can I say this? Um, she she thought that the cards wouldn't freak people out as much as if, like for me, I'm saying, well, the information's coming from my guides. So that's why she used these cards. So Nikki uses her cards, uh, mom's cards, to do readings. And, uh, and, and then she has the ability to bring through. It's pictures. sort of like a palm reader who's super talented, but they just want you to think that you're looking at the palm. They're exactly. already getting everything directly, and it makes you feel more com comfortable so exactly. You don't freak out. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what mom thought was, oh, honey, people are going to be too scared if we say it comes from our guides. So mm -hmm. that's why she had the cards. Yeah. Well, can I try uh, at least an angel, uh, angel photo of Joy, maybe Archangel Michael and maybe the older Geronimo, but maybe they can give a topic and then that gets you talking just a little bit. I don't want to take up too much of sure. your energy or time today, but here's sure. Joy photograph of an angel and- okay. Maybe you'll get a wonderful topic because, I mean, there's a million here. Oh, honey. Okay, well, what comes right away when you look at her is <laughs> there's almost a sadness in her because people don't realize how much joy there is. I mean, she, if she could shout from the rooftops, this girl, this angel, excuse me, Joy, uh, she would just scream, look for the joy instead of the pain. Mm -hmm. And um, she just, she loves joy so much and she just wants to give it to everybody. And yet she sees people, like you said earlier, honey, people looking down at their phones and they're reading all this bad information. And, um, and it's almost like 
I see her like that, like sad, like, oh, how am I going to get their attention? Yes. Even a phone can carry a photo of joy. Uh, so a reminder on my website, you can yes. get those. Um, photos can change color and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Archangel Michael for you for a reminder on any front, even just getting a hug so you didn't spend any energy today here. Now, oh my, isn't he serious and so strong? Holy smokes. His energy is intense. Yeah, okay. And then somebody just said to me that he needs every ounce of that intensity because he's called on by everybody on this planet. And so he's like in... 10 hundred places at the same time yeah and his energy is it's consistent honey it's just he, it it's just who he is how he is and uh last but not least geronimo who's action dry wit humor um but more informal yeah nah duh you already know the answer very very like a lightning bolt oh, oh god that image God, I hope everybody can see this man. Look at that. Honey, you know, it's like he's got the wisdom of the ages behind those eyes. And uh, and people can catch a sacred smell where they're at now or just feel the vibe. You can put your hand out to the photo two screens away, five years away in the future. There's not really as much time and space as we think. That's why joy is available right now. You can be happy in this very moment for no reason whatsoever. Good luck with that, but true. You know, sweetheart, the, the, the thing with him is if people call on his energy, he's not fooling around. He, If you ask him to help you with something very specific, <laughs> you better be serious about that request so for all of you out there listening um if you go to geronimo's picture to get that energy oh my goodness my goodness he's not messing around you have to be you have to be serious about your request because he just no he, he doesn't have time for people who ask for something uh, and they just want him to give it to them. They don't want to have to do anything. They don't want to really have to change much. No, he's he doesn't have time for that anymore. Uh, he was, what I'm hearing is he was a much more patient young man. But even after a year of doing the work that he was doing, he was like, all right, okay. And up came the boundaries. Talk about boundaries. Whoa. This guy is like, yes, I will help you. Of course, I will help you. But only if you're serious. Only if you will commit to this new path. And whoa. And so if people do commit to this new path, <laughs> he will definitely be there to help them. But they have to be serious about it. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Can I use, instead of the classic Mary, you know, more... Uh... I don't know how to say this. The classic, you know, if you're from Ireland, Catholic, you have to have Mary a certain way with the heart on the shirt and stuff. I have that, but I've got a more modern photo I love to use for the big Mary who's compassion, trust, faith, the chiefs. It's only for Richard Geronimo said about Mary. If we all had her faith and trust, there'd be no more need for worry or fear. And she's love. She's everything we need. So with that introduction, with your permission, I'm going to put up what a uh, photo that I forgot about for a couple of years, but it is awesome. And her eyes can sparkle more. She can smile more if people want to feel the photo. Whoa. Yeah. But if anybody wants to see rainbow glitter on the peripheral of your eyes, like three inches away and you're at the Macy's counter and someone spilled a lot of women's cosmetics and there's a fan, rainbow glitter in the air around you if you're gung-ho and no, no fear, just fun. You know, sweetheart, it's almost like she doesn't even see fear. Any, any, no. She doesn't see it. It's not even a part of her. It's no, no, look at it. It's, it's, there is an innocence about her also, which is interesting, but she, um, 
No. When when we ask her about, uh, let's say, something very dramatic and intense, she immediately goes to the hope of the situation. Like, again, you and I were talking about the pandemic. She would have seen it totally as a positive thing. She wouldn't even have gone into a dark corner to look for fear or anger. No, mm -mm. she goes right to the higher perspective of everything and doesn't really understand why people choose to go to the depths of despair and hopelessness. So what? You go where? She doesn't, that doesn't register with her. It just doesn't. And she doesn't understand why human beings spend so much time there. Can, can we have you talk about the practical aspect of, you know, where you put your focus or your awareness? We're not even aware that we're using our Sherlock Holmes glass half the time to magnify stuff that we're putting our attention to. And there's the whole thought of, you know, you are your thinking, you're not your thinking. It depends. Peaceful Warrior, the movie, you're not your thoughts. Uh, and then both are true. It's duality stuff. But I wanted to mention, uh, you've got a way that you remind people to slow down so that they're more aware before they commit their energy uh or they're more yeah more in their heart whenever they can remember to remember if they remember good luck with that um but how do you approach that topic with people to just pump the brakes a little on what they know to breathe more smile more live more love more allow more a lot of mores schmores oh just a simple question <laughs> only the eternal question that makes us all amazing part of humanity Oh, honey, what do I tell people? I tell them, close their eyes, look inside their gut, but it's in their soul. Find the divinity within yourself. Because when you find it, and then you ask the universe, help me live from this place, this beautiful, peaceful place. Whoa, it's like somebody just changed your eyes and you start seeing things much differently. And... Always look for the good that can come out of it, no matter what the situation is. Look for the good. There's a lot of good in there. Remember, you signed up for it. Your soul did. Not your mind. Not your conscious mind. Your soul. There's a reason why. And ask to be shown the higher purpose of why we go through some of the crappy stuff that we go through. And... Another thing a friend taught me um, when I was going through just a terrible breakup of, with someone, and she said, send him a thank you note for teaching you how to experience love. And I remember at the time I said, are you crazy? And she, <laughs> said, <laughs> she said, no, 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 send him a thank you note. And she said, you don't have to send it. But she says, we need to shift your mind into a place of gratitude that, yes, you have pain right now, but the pain will subside and you will have learned how to love. And so that also helps a lot to thank the people that I know some of it's really tough uh, to thank the people that put you in that situation. Um, just always try to see things from God's perspective, which is a much higher perspective than us humans ever look at things. We we see the pain right away, but it's like, no, no, no. Come up here and see it. And you can even ask God or the universe, please help me see this experience from your eyes, not my eyes. And that helps a lot too, honey. It does. Mm. Uh, that... There's a Hawaiian practice of gratitude. Hono, oh, I can't pronounce it. Like nine, nine syllables or more. But part of the step is to thank, even in a direction that you're like, oh my God, that was my mugger in the alleyway three weeks ago. Why would I thank that person? Uh, and so yeah. my problem is, my drama is, my life story 19 paragraphs later turns into my opportunity for growth is. Again, good luck with that. Casablanca, the movie. I'm shocked to see there's gambling going on in this casino. Sir, your winnings. <laughs> tuck it in. Um, it, it's up to you. Do you want to play the tables and play love? Uh, unlove? Yes. yes. Where are you going to put your now, focus? Honey, we have choices every day. Every day. 
we can plow through life or we can just flow through life. And uh, we have that choice. Every day we wake up. We got Last few day. questions for you. If you want to do a little, can you do a teaser about at least one of your two books you're working on or, or both if you're like, oh, no, no, I've talked about these books. What can you tell us that we should look forward to? Remember, you've got a long library of books. I'm going to mention some more right now to buy you time. Relax. It's Only a Ghost, 2001. The, Phys the Psychic Housewives Handbook, 2009. Look for the good and you'll find God, Point Just Made, 2008. Um, the Key, Unlock Your Psychic Abilities, 2006. Things I'd Wish I'd Known When I Got Started, Delegate, uh, yeah. 2017, uh, and then and more. The Secret Psychic, 2022. Um, a lot of books. But how is this one or the next two going to be a little bit different or fun? Well, or you know what, um, honey? <sighs> okay, so the one that, I, that I'm working on is, okay, so... The first half of the book is for parents of gifted children and what the child, when they do this, it means that. And if they say this, it means that, that kind of, that's the half, first half of the book. And then the second half of the book is written for the child so that the child understands what they're going through and why did that happen? You know, why did they see grandpa who's been dead for 10 years, that kind of stuff. That's what I want is a book for both of them just to help the child understand what is going on. Honey, I have so many parents and grandparents who take psychic classes from me, not because they think they have psychic abilities, but because their grandchildren do. And they want to help their grandchild. Uh, just the other day, a grandma signed up and she said, my daughter and her husband are terrified of my grandchild's gifts and she said so i want to take the class so that i can help her grow now how cool is that yeah. i've had dads with their sons dads bring their sons to psychic development class moms bring their daughters um it's it's a really cool approach instead of you know like this grandma said my daughter doesn't want to have anything to do with this okay great so she's got a gifted child <laughs> she's probably going to teach the gifted child that this is evil and bad. So yeah. grandma's going to fly in and save the day, which is yeah. really cool. And then the other book, hmm, I can't really talk about it yet. Oh, that's okay. Okay, good. You're always welcome. If Nikki comes on or something, and then we have you back on in the spring, you'll come show us the book by then or next summer, whenever. Yep. Uh, you're welcome to come back on anytime. Uh, last Last thing or step or action or letting go, whatever you want to call it, uh, loosey goosey. Is that the expression? Uh, I'm going to offer this, but you can say no. And this is good for boundaries too, but only of the highest intent, no thinking. Um, I'm asking angels to take care of this. So only my highest part of me. If I put my hand out in Texas, Michael Andre Ford here, and if Echo wants to put her hand out and feel my vibe or we feel each other's only highest compassion and love. Yeah. Can you feel energy coming from Texas? That's just a high blood. I can, Nani. I can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you want, can you, for the crowd, love only, can you ask angels, your group, you just to feel love, even if they sit like Kumbaya style, um, yeah. have people take a, well, I need to rephrase that. If people wish to slow down and just feel love in the present moment, joy, mm -hmm. enthusiasm, sparkle. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really cool. Uh, anyway, I like to do the hand only because it's a physical and they know they're doing something, but there's a another way they could just put their hands up in their lap. Yeah, they could. Yeah, have their hands open to receive. And Will you take us 10 seconds through that and then hold us for at least 15 seconds to feel love? But none of your energy is committed and you're not going to get a knock in the head a month from now. Don't blame <laughs> me. I didn't do it. Angels are going to run interference. You're not using any of Echo Bodine's energy. You're just going to guide Ooh. us. Okay, honey. All right. So what I want everybody to do is just uh, get nice and comfortable, sit back, relax, close your eyes, open up your palms like they're reaching up to heaven almost. And okay, now I want you to think of Michael's picture of joy. It was this beautiful, 
beautiful, amazing pink ball of energy. Okay, so first of all, I want you to let your body feel joy in your hands. Your head is going to want to say, oh, this is really stupid. I've got better things to do. And I'm going to say to your head, chill out. You can at least take 10 seconds to allow joyful energy in your hands. Okay, now I want you to take one of those hands and put it on your own heart. And we're going to send joy into your heart. Yes, we are. Okay, now I want you to ask the universe to please clear you of negative thinking, negative thoughts, and especially fearful thoughts. In your other hand that's still open, I want you to think about what are the fearful thoughts that you walk around with every day? Visualize. Visualize those thoughts coming out of your mind and going into the palm of your other hand. Fear of what? Fear of what? Put it in that other hand. Okay. Now, I want you to reach that hand up high, and I want you to give that hand. Give that hand to your guides, to God, to Jesus, whoever, whoever you trust to take these fears because I want this fear out of your body. It's causing physical problems. It causes pain. The biggest one is fear of the future. Where is this planet headed? We don't have to know that today. That is not important today. What is important today is that you allow yourself to feel the joy that is available to you. And I want you to remember that amazing white light inside of your soul. When God created your soul, he, she took a part of itself and put it inside of your soul for the sole purpose of guiding you whenever you needed any guidance. Our animals have this. Everything that is living has this light inside of it. So again, now I want you to put both of your hands together. And the joy that you had in one hand is now covering the other hand. Okay. So that for the rest of the day, and for as many days as you can hold that joy, it will stay there if you allow it. Okay, good. Good. Now you can open your eyes. I'm all leaky. <laughs> I've been yawning. Uh, so that's good. Yawning uh, is very good. Yawning and there's, oh, and leaky uh, is released. So. Okay, good, honey. Good. Okay. So and there's joy. Right. Yeah, and if you could get a applause, compliment, you did great. That was way amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, honey. Yeah, you're welcome. Yay. Well, Echo, that was a great way to put a cherry on the Sunday. Um, is there anything else you want to mention? Um, how can people find your sister, Nikki Bodine? She doesn't get plugged enough. Let's do well, it. No, she doesn't, honey. Uh, Nikki, let's see. what how did, Nikki dot Bodine at gmail.com n-i-k-k-i dot bodine b-o-d-i-n-e at gmail.com and people can do a search look her up but she's getting uh 
asked all the time to do other people's listening for them. So and she's happy to do so. That's what she's there for is to help out. Uh, and again, you've turned, uh, you are helping people in groups, which is even better for you, keeps you intact, workshops, and you've been blowing it out. Um, not just the school, I'll call it, or the place of learning. Um, again, the uh, Center for Intuitive Living since 2010, 2003, sorry, 20 years, but now it's Zoom for since uh, yeah. 2013 yeah. or so. Yep. Yeah. So, or online, I should say. Yes. And then, yes, let's plug the new TV show starting <clears throat> Tuesday, September 12th. And right now it's scheduled to start at eight o'clock, but I'm trying to get it moved back to seven o'clock. So once this happens, I'll send you a banner and I'll let you know. But anyway, it's you go to boldbravetv.com. <laughs> com. And is this a good book for people to start with out of all the different books? This Honey, is the best. This yeah. is the favorite book in the household yeah. here. Yes. Um, okay. We have another intuitive in the household who loves you. And uh, this is her favorite book. Just had to good. mention it. Good. 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 Well, Echo, thank you very much for being on Angels, Positivity and Love in Minnesota. You've done a tremendous turn for all of us. And thank you for being so patient, so amazing, so inspirational. Yes. You're welcome. And I'm going to send you that as soon as we're done. I'm going to send you that elementals picture and see what you think. Okay, honey. Awesome. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. This was really fun. Thank you, Michael. Michael.